Kristen K. Okay. Jeffrey, good to see you. Hey, I'm going to be working on this tape today. Okay. These screws, I've got a little screwdriver. I'm going to turn this little light on. Okay. I'm going to put my screws away. Now, this tape is really old. This might have been recorded in 1983. So it's almost close it's 40 years old. True Tone. The brand True Tone comes from Western Auto Stores. And my grandmother had this cassette tape. She recorded it. She recorded a lot of cassette tapes, you know, homemade tapes and stuff like that. So. She just passed away. And so I got her, one thing I got from her house was her cassette couple of these cassettes just wanted to the tape is broken side of it the tape is broken side of it so I think the leader tape is comes come apart from the magnetic tape so leader tape is broken away from the magnetic tape so okay it's Five screws holding this tape together. Okay, just want to get all the screws loose in here and this tape. Okay. Okay, all five of these. Now, I don't know if anyone says dot. Made when I had my eye operated on. So. 1983, maybe even 82, I don't know for sure. When did she pass away recently? Recently, Jeffrey, she was 91 years old. Sure was. Okay, you open it up now. Inside of a tape, now inside of a tape normally, this film, this film here is used to reduce friction when the tape is turning. It reduces friction when your tape is turning. This is really just the window. Just the window. This is a slip, uh, a slip, uh, a slip sheet. It's called a slip sheet. The slip sheet is really slick on this side. So the slip sheet is really slick on this side. And the purpose of the slip sheet is cause the tape to slip past itself. Because the tape is going to have friction inside. And it's going to have a trouble playing. Hello, Betty Bun. How are you? So the slip sheet produces less friction. It's like wax paper. If you're missing the slip sheet, wax pa paper can be actually a good solution. Okay, now. Okay. Now what we want to do. Okay. Now the track for the tape to run. It has to run. Now you. Can cassettes be over tightened? Yeah, they can be over tightened. Usually, when people have an old cassette, what people can do is to smack it or, you know, rewind it and fast forward it a couple of times. You rewind it and fast forward it a couple of times, you know, just to loosen it up in there. So, this is your um, leader tape. Now, it goes on the outside. Now, I think I see a little mold. I'm going to tell you guys is if a tape has mold in it, a tape is really old, it might have mold in it. Okay. 
alcohol swamps. Now what I'm going to do, tape is over 40 years old, what I'm going to do, you know, just use some alcohol. Rubbing alcohol swabs to clean the inside of this thing. You know, I don't want any mold in here. You see the, that alcohol swab? I'm rubbing off the tape with the alcohol swab. Okay. Now, it goes around the outside. The tape goes around the outside of this little... Um, of this thing here. There's this little... Um, this little one here, maybe you can't see it. You bad, bad boy. Oh, Christ's sake. thing okay now I want you to see up close it goes around the outside okay what I'm gonna do this is the way I've always done it okay Betty Bun how are you okay now this is a scotch tape Scotch tape here. I guess I'll zoom it out. There. I'll zoom it back out a little bit. Okay. What I'm going to do. Now, on, along the outside of the tape path. Along the outside of the tape path. Around the outside of the tape. Which would be this side of the tape. This side of the tape here is the outside of the tape. The heads come from the outside in. Okay. So if we're going to use scotch tape is all I've got. I don't have any splicing tape. But I've been repairing tapes since I was eight years old. Okay. There. The scotch tape is on the back side. And you want to line it up perfectly. I'm going to put this top back on here to keep it from getting messed up. Now, I lay it down with the sticky side up. Now, if you can see what I'm doing. You know. Okay. That the outside of the tape facing you, the outside of the tape is the sticky, is where... You need to have the sticky, you need to have the scotch tape on the back of the tape. It's important that it's on the back. Now, what I'm going to do is probably, I don't have a splicing block. Now, you can get a splicing block. I had two cassette tapes growing up. I needed to know this. It's good to know if you want to keep them. And I'm telling you, I've got almost a thousand cassettes and every one of them played. Now, they may not play very well, some of them, but they do play. It's pretty. What you have to do. Just along the edge. I don't have a splicing block, guys. Now, if I had a splicing block, it would make it easier. But since I don't have the splicing block... And I'm going to turn it around.
you know, I try to get, even if the splice is a little more narrow than the rest, the tape guides in the player are exactly the width of the tape, okay? The splot, the tape guides in that machine are the same width as the tape itself. So, if this splice is wider than the rest of the tape, if this splice is wider than the rest of the tape, it will hang up in that machine. It will hang up in that machine if the splice is wider than the rest of it. And it won't play. That's why I kind of prefer my splices to be a little more narrow. I actually prefer my splices to be A little more narrow than the rest of the tape. Okay. Now I've got some, you know, the splice is done. I just want to add a little pressure to. Okay, now it goes, the tape goes on the outside of this little peg. This little peg in here, it goes on the outside of it. it you'd think that it goes directly against the roller, but it goes on the outside of this little peg there. On both sides. In the other tape, we're going to have to take it apart, too. Okay. And here it is. It's in here now. Now, I'm going to show you guys. I need to get my... Tweezers. Okay, now these are the different parts of the, of it. We can have that now, can we? I remember doing all this with eight tracks. Eight tracks were notorious. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Emery Davis, Betty Bunn. Hello. Okay. Now the parts of the tape. I've gone over the slip sheet. This metal piece right here comes out. Okay. This metal piece here comes out. You know what this is? It's a magnetic barrier. It's a piece of metal. Now the purpose of this piece of metal. The heads in the tape player are a magnet. It functions as an electromagnet. It stops the magnetic pulse from the recorder from going into the pile. Tape pack. From going into the tape pack. Uh, yeah. We don't want the magnetic... Okay, now this... Is your pressure pad. Now, it's a metal springy... A springy metal thing with a pad on it. Now, this little pad in here... This tape won't play without the pad. It'll play, but it'll be very muffled. So, if you're playing a tape that's very muffled... It's the chances are this if you could see this um, pad you see the little cloth pad the cloth pad is glued onto the metal springy thing and that you can also use some a piece of foam you can buy replacement foam pads to go in there you can buy them on eBay replacement foam pads to go on your springy thing there so what we want to do this uh, this pad assembly goes in here in between here so if you ever accidentally take your tape apart upside down you don't want to take your tape apart upside down 
Okay. Now the springy thing is back in here. Now this is a slip sheet. Your slip sheet has to go here. If it's in the middle of the tape. Here is your window. Now this goes on the inside of there. Yeah. Gently put that back on there. Your tape is back together. Good Jeffrey Lebelski, four ninety nine. Thank you for your super chat, Jeffrey. You are a good man, my friend. Good. Now, the screws go back in here. I'm not going to use the alcohol on the other side because I'm going to take it apart. We'll play this tape, okay? My grandmother made this tape 40 years ago. There we go. Okay, now I've got the perfect size screw. And I haven't heard this tape for many, many years. I knew this tape maybe existed. Okay. Okay. Now this tape is done. Okay. Turn aside. Here's another tape just like it. Larry Childers and other songs. I guess it's country music and um, we're going to take this one apart. All these tapes. USA Components Assembled in Mexico. Made in the early 80s or the late 70s. These tapes are from Western Auto. Have you ever heard of Western Auto, guys? You ever heard of Western Auto supply stores? But the pressure pad springy thing, the pressure pad spring is at a place. And I have to take the tape apart to, to reposition the pressure pad springy thing. Okay. Yeah. And uh, some tapes have what's known as binder hydrolysis. Binder hydrolysis is when... Okay, the tape is is um, clear tape, like scotch tape, made of mylar or polyester. Clear polyester film is what the tape is made of. Okay, got one screw out. Okay, we got two screws out. I try not to lose these screws. I think this is just stuck together. All five of the screws are out. Okay. LOL. Reassembled in Kentucky. Exactly. We had Western Auto in Nashville. Leah Sugar, Bridget Sampson. Good to see you. And uh, Anne Marie. We used to buy my car batteries. Exactly. There was one by me. It closed down. How does Jonah know all this? I've been record pairing these cassette these tapes since I was eight years old. Eight tracks were more technologically flawed 
eight track tapes were more technologically flawed. I'll give you another listen on eight tracks later. And I've got a few eight tracks left, but I was a kid in the early 80s and in the late 70s. My mom had a car and it had an eight track player and a Pinto. Does anybody ever remember the Ford Pinto? My mother had a Ford Pinto when I was a kid. And it had an eight track tape player in the Ford Pinto. So, um, now this is your little pressure pad. And here your pressure pad's out of place. And you can see the frame of your little pressure pad is whack. See, it's all whacked out. It's bent. See, I'll show you guys. Okay. The pressure pad is turned sideways. It's bent, see? It's bent. See how the pressure, it's not, it's the springy thing that's bent. See this, the pressure, the springy thing is bent? The springy thing is bent. So what we're going to do was just going to straighten the springy thing. Okay. Now we've straightened out our little springy thing. See the springy thing is straight. I'll move this out of the way. So you can see how I straighten the springy thing. Okay. Now the springy thing fits in a slot in here. Now, now we are going to take the springy thing. The springy thing is done. The springy thing is back where it's supposed to be. Now the springy thing is back. To being springy. We'll do an 8 track later. And, okay, now, now this is the tape in it. The tape is inside of here to hold the slip sheet in place. It's called the slip sheet. Now, the slip sheet is in place. I used to have eight tracks growing up. Me too. 73 Ford Pinto manual transmission was the first car I had. Yeah, my mom had a Pinto station wagon. It was called the Woody station wagon with the wood um, paneling on the sides. I was a lonely kid growing up. I didn't have anything to do. When the A-Tracks tore up, I would take them apart and fix them when I was eight years old. So that's how long I've been working on tapes. This, now this tape, it's clear plastic film called Mylar um, Polyester Clear Plastic Film. And the iron oxide is a metallic particles. Metallic particles are mixed with a binder. The binder is a glue. It's a solution with the metal particles immersed in the glue think of it as a jello salad you have you know those cans of mixed for mix, mixed fruit you take the jello you immerse the mixed fruit in the jello so the mixed fruit the fruit cocktail the fruit cocktail is floating around in the jello and when it hardens you got the 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 fruit cup fruit salad is, is floating around in the jello. The fruit cup is the is the magnetic particles immersed in the binder. Now, the kind of binder that this is, the glue that this is, the substance, it attracts moisture. It attracts moisture. Moisture. It soaks up moisture. The metallic, the binder does, which is the glue that the metallic particles are immersed in. It absorbs water and it becomes sticky. So this tape becomes sticky because the binder breaks down. The glue breaks down and becomes sticky. The only way to remedy this, I will never look at it because that's the same. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jeffrey. But what you can do, you can get a food dehydrator. And this is what professionals do. If your tape won't play through the player and it starts squealing really loud. If your tape starts squealing really loud, coming through the player, it probably has something known as binder hydrolysis. Binder hydrolysis is also known as sticky shed syndrome or sticky tape syndrome. And some of your cheap tapes, pre-recorded store-bought cassettes from companies like CBS Records or any of those CBS brand uh, uh, cassettes that you buy from the store. I have a lot of those that have binder hydrolysis. Maybe they come from Florida. If you go on eBay and buy a bunch of cassettes, you don't want to buy them from Florida because Florida is humid. 
You want to buy them from California, Arizona. Dry climates. Dry climates is what it takes to preserve a cassette for years and years with a dry climate. It's the moisture in the air that soaks up in the in the in the substrate, causing it to get sticky. And and the music is still on the tape. There was a tape that a girl found in the ocean. Her mixtape was in the ocean floating around. There are tapes that have been in underwater in the bottom of a lake for 20 years. You pull it up, you dry out the tape, and it'll play after 20 years in the lake, in an ocean, in 20 years in a river. If you dry it out enough, it will play. Because the magnetic particles, the particles are charged, magnetized in a pattern. Now, iron oxide is your type A cassettes. They hold a charge, long magnetic charge. Iron holds a magnetic charge longer than anything else. So your music will stay on your tape longer, but it'll gradually demagnetize because it's an artificial magnet, but it will stay that way much longer on iron oxide, which is type 1 cassettes. Chromium dioxide is CRO2 type 2. They don't, it won't stay magnetized as long for as many years, but a tape could last 100 years. Your recording on a tape could last 100 years, Best case scenario. So. Yeah, okay, guy. Major Sammy, you are, thing is, removed, and you are timed out. You cannot do that stuff. Okay, now. Now, that's what that is. You can put these tapes in a food dehydrator. 120 degrees, 12 hours. At 120 degrees, we'll bake the moisture out of this tape, and it will play again. That's how you take a tape with binder hydrolysis and make it play again, is to bake it. That's what professionals do. You have really old videotape from the 1950s. That videotape gets to where it gets sticky and it won't play. They bake them. They bake the tapes. They bake the tapes, and that re-adheres the particles, and it dries up the the goo, the, um, okay, hold on, it dries up the substrate, it dries up your binder, it dries it up, okay, 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 this tape is clear plastic film, I don't have anything to even write. Uh, okay. Clear plastic film. Here's the glue. Magnetic particles suspended in the glue. Okay. Magnetic particles suspended in the glue. Okay. When it gets sticky, this becomes sticky. You bake it, and it dries this up. This is a binder. Okay, I'm going to get off the soapbox. Now I'm going to finish this tape. Okay, now. Do they make tape cleaners that wipe the surface clean? The tape surface clean? No, they don't. But you can run it through a player. Um with rubbing alcohol that's how you some people do to clean the tape with just a little bit of rubbing alcohol with a q-tip with a cloth over the tape you can clean the mold off of a tape it's kind of difficult but you just have to find out hey ptwe how are you doing okay this tape has been fixed as well so you just uh, the top of the tape pack you can save a tape and salvage it if you've got a mold in it so i had several tapes that were bad moldy and I've demolded these tapes, and they're still okay. They're fine now. You just, you run it through the player. In the head assembly of the tape, up in the head assembly of the tape, I would just put something like a cotton swab with a cotton swab up inside of the, I would cut a piece of this cotton swab, stick it up in here, cut it to fit, and then get a piece of maybe, um, and you know, put it up inside of here. 
or up in, you know, and then and hold it in place and get a, um, or even up inside of here somewhere, just so it contacts the tape inside and tape it in place. And then you put it in the player, fast forward it, rewind it. When you fast forward it and rewind it, that rubbing alcohol will clean the tape over time. Oh, as you rewind it fast forward. It may take a time for it to dry, but another thing for sticky tapes is if the lubrication dries out in a tape, people have actually applied, um, applied silicone, liquid silicone to the tape surface. Liquid silicone on the tape surface with a Q-tip, and it and over and when you let it dry that silicone will make the tape play normally again there's a channel that did that that were talking about that the tape gets dried out the lubrication in the tape gets dried out and it won't play so um so that's what they do okay true tone you see you can tell these are old cassettes and later on i'll do the thing of binder hydrolysis and i'll i'll show you what binder hydrolysis is now, I don't have a um, food dehydrator yet, but I do have a dehumidifier. Now, what it takes to preserve tapes is keeping a tape stored less than 50% relative humidity. So, it has to be less than 50% relative humidity. The lower the humidity, the better. The drier the air, the better for the tapes to last, you know. Really humid envi environments kill tapes. That's what kills them, is humidity. Because the binder soaks up the... Now it's done, okay. It's the it's the humidity in the air that soaks up moisture. It's the binder, the glue in the tape that soaks up moisture. Four ninety nine. dollars yes. Okay, guys. Oh, fire up the original Walkman. Hey there, Charles Richardson. Hello, um, Street Life. Good to see you. Okay. Now I've got both of these cassettes that I repaired. Let me, um, okay. Now this is the tape, now the splice, let's see how it goes over the splice. As a wrong, some wonderful morning, the battle over with leaving. It's going over the splice just fine. As a wrong, see that tape after 40 years, plays perfect after 40 years. Okay, guys. 
did you put that sheet of wax paper back in? I did, uh, um, I did put the piece of wax paper back, Jeffrey. Sure did. Uh, she's just singing along with the music. She's singing along with the old-fashioned gospel music. So, you're yeah, just singing along. And she had her eye operated on 1983 or whatever it was. And the binder hydrolysis is not taken over on this tape. Binder hydrolysis is not taken over. After 40 years. Some tapes binder hydrolysis takes over. Because the cheap pre-recorded tapes are worse. The best thing if you want to get into tapes. Is don't buy pre-recorded tapes. I mean they're collectible. But, um, but pre-recorded tapes can have problems with binder hydrolysis. I've seen that in pre-recorded tapes. But... Because the tapes, the tape they use for pre-recorded tapes is cheap, extremely cheap. The tape they use for pre-recorded tapes is extremely cheap, and so. <laughs> she always had birds. Okay, it's the tape I fixed. Now, here's the other tape with the um, the pressure pad I fixed, the springy thing. It must be us talking as a kid, our childhood. Yeah, I can't believe it's got him talking on it. That's a sample, guys. That's what, you know, recording on tape can do for you. Amazon playlists, Spotify playlists. Websites can go down. Websites can go down. I was going to upload a video from the hospital. Walking around in that hospital yesterday and I accidentally deleted it. Can you believe that? I accidentally de deleted it. One button deletes the whole video. With these tapes will last for years... I don't know if a website would last 40 years. I don't know if you could keep your information on a flash drive or a website for 40 years. Okay. I don't know if your information could last on a tape for 40 years. On a website for 40 years. I don't know if YouTube videos could last 40 years. Honestly. I don't think YouTube would last that long. You may not even have YouTube videos in 40 years. Who knows? These tapes will last longer than any YouTube videos. You know? What is it, little 
now. The tapes I want to talk to you about. Here's the tapes I want to talk to you about. Binder hydrolysis. Okay. Now the tapes here, like this, look for a label that looks like this, or a label that looks like that. You see this red? All of these companies were made by CBS Records. Okay. Do you see this emblem? You see that right there? That little round circle, that emblem? CBS. These tapes are made through CBS Records. And there's lots of other companies that work through CBS Records. And so cheaper ones through CBS Records tapes that look like this that have the CBS Columbia or CPS Records. There's lots of um, a different ones. Here's one that's a different brand or a different label. There, there are ones that are different brands and different labels and different uh, companies. But basically, on the back of them, it'll say in the small print up here, it'll say CBS Records. Not all, not all the white tapes are bad, but CBS is notorious. Anything in this upper corner, if you're going to look vintage cassettes, it's good for you to get a cassette player Walkman to take it with you when you go to the flea markets to look for used cassettes. Take you one of these to listen to with headphones. Use cassettes that you're going to pay money for at a flea market. Take the tapes test them out in your Walkman. If you want to play the tapes, make sure they play and take a Walkman with you to look at used cassettes. There are places that sell used cassettes. You just got to take one of these and make sure it doesn't have binder hydrolysis or sticky tape syndrome. Now, I mean, you can remedy the sticky tape syndrome, but it's hard to do. Very difficult. And once they get the sticky tape, they're never okay after that. You have to continually baking them every now and then. You have to put it in the food dehydrator, bake the tape every year to a couple of years to get it to play. Now, this tape has binder hydrolysis. Okay, now I'm going to switch the camera. And I'm just going to play bits and snippets of this tape because of the copyright problem. You can hear the tape sound shaky a little bit. It does pretty good in this player. The tape, the tape actually does pretty good in this machine. But it's a little shaky. Okay, now, now they'll play fine if you remove the springy thing because the tension on the tape will cause it to mess up. The tension on the tape will cause it to, to mess up. I took the springy thing to make this tape play. You can play a tape with binder hydrolysis. You can play it if you get rid of the springy thing. What I chose to do is mash in the springy thing. See how the springy thing mashed all the way in? You can tape a tape with mag, uh, binder hydrolysis and it can play. You can play a tape with binder hydrolysis, but you have to get rid of your springy thing or mash your springy thing all the way in. Because it's the tension of the tape, of the tape squeezed in between the springy thing and the head of the tape machine. Another thing you can do is to head because your head goes up into the tape some that's why some players will play a binder hydrolysis cassette more than others if it's a tape player that pushes the head all the way up in the tape it won't play because the friction against the sticky tape because either that some people say that the tape has sticky shed syndrome other people say that the tape has lost its lubrication 
Can you spray the tape with 99% alcohol while it's open and clean it? You can. Definitely. Definitely. You can use the 99% isopropyl alcohol inside the tape. You just don't want to put too much on the tape because it will melt the tape. It will warp. It'll cause the tape to warp. And it'll curl up. If you get too much alcohol on, a, on the tape, the ribbon will curl up. The ribbon will curl up. And you don't want the ribbon to curl up. If you want to put rubbing alcohol on the surface of this tape, it has to be a very, very small amount. Or the tape will curl up. Because it can't handle the heat. Because that rubbing alcohol produces heat. Now, your springy thing is pushed all the way in. Because either the lack of lubrication. Some people have said it's a lack of lubrication on these CVS cassettes. It's either a lack of lubrication or binder hydrolysis. But if you take a Q-tip with silicone liquid silicone and if you apply liquid silicone to the surface of the tape it'll cause it to play somebody on a channel on a cassette channel now i'm going to fix the springy thing okay and we'll see how it does now now Okay, now your springy thing is fixed. You see how your springy thing is back out like it's supposed to be? Now we're going to play it with the springy thing out like it's supposed to be. When it, when the tape has a lack of lubrication or binder hydrolysis, it won't play because of the friction. The friction of squeezing. Now if it's a tape player that pushes the tape all the way... the whoa. If it's a tape player that pushes the head all the way up in the machine, it won't play because the pressure... Of squeezing the tape in between the springy thing and the head won't let it go through the tape is not as slippery as it should be but if a tape player is adjusted to where the head barely comes into the tape like that and the head just goes right barely against it that tape player will play the cassette a lot easier than a tape player that pushes it all the way up in there that's why you have to get rid of your springy thing if the tape is messed up that way if a tape, tape has a lack of lubrication or binder hydrolysis you have to get rid of your springy thing or mash up your springy thing up in there to where it stays in there. Or you can adjust your head to where your head doesn't come in as far. Just play it on tape players with the heads that don't come into the tape as far. So what we're going to do, we're going to play this binder hydrolysis cassette or lack of lubricant cassette in this player. We're going to see how it does, okay? It's playing. But it's shaky. It seems like you have to play it for a while for it to start happening. does on the other side playing okay i mean it's a little a little warbly because yeah i mean but it's just john jacobs how are you oh. yeah but just take player this tape player plays them better than some other players and i'll show you the reason this tape player Darn it. You can't see it. It's a two capstan. If you can see it, it's got two capstans and two pinch rollers. Now, the reason it has two capstans and two pinch rollers, it's not an auto reverse cassette deck. 
This is not auto reverse. High end tape players will have two capstans and two pinch rollers that travel in the same direction at the same time. And the reason why they have two capstans is for regulation of speed. There's something called wow and flutter. Wow and flutter is when the tape speeds up and slows down. It has a more precise speed in a tape player with two head, two capstans it's called a dual capstan and it's a three head you see you can see how the head is split the first part of the head is the record head the second part is the play head they're separate like in an old big reel to reel tape player your cheap tape players your play head does the recording but with this one, you can actually play it and hear your music being recorded as it's being recorded. You can actually listen to your music while it's being recorded. So, it's a, it's a dual capstan drive. It's a three-head closed-loop dual capstan tape player. It's a Sony. We're going to try another tape with supposed binder hydrolysis or lack of lubricant. On them, okay, another one, and it's another one of these cheap CBS cassettes. Okay, mm. Let's see how this one does. I'm gonna try to find one that has problems. It sounds warbly. It has that warbly sound to it, you see. Now, in this one again, your um your 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 um springy thing is your springy thing is pushed all the way back in there. I pushed the warbly thing all the way back in there, the springy thing, to reduce the friction to make the tape go over the heads easier. And so I'm going to pop back out my springy thing. You son of a gun. I ruined my springy thing, guys. They're going to shoot. I guess that won't work, will it? I guess that goes for that one. I'll have to take this tape apart and fix the springy thing. But hey, it's playing. That's why I have over almost a thousand cassettes in every last one play. Every one of them. And that's more than you can say for an old any other format. You know, if it lasts all these years. The opera collection. That's opera music. Oh. Yeah, these binder hydrolysis cassettes, if you get the right tape player, even a tape to degrade it will play. Yeah. Let's try this. It's the CBS records, okay? The CBS records. So you can take your springy thing you don't want to get rid of your springy thing if you mash your springy thing all the way in it'll stay mashed in if you mash in your springy thing here's another way you can do it you can take out your springy thing and you can get a plastic a, a rubber pad you can actually get a stick-on pad when you get rid of your springy thing you can get a stick-on pad that sticks onto the piece of metal in the back there the piece of metal in the back there you can get a sponge that sticks on and the sponge will only... See, the springy thing comes all the way out to here. It produces too much friction for these um, um, sticky tapes. But if you can get a sponge that sticks directly on the piece of metal that I showed you, the 
the magnetic barrier piece of metal, it'll it'll only come out to here. It'll only come out to here. I'll show you an old Memorex. And that's how these old Memorex tapes are made. Really old Memorex. Now it'll sound horribly, but you can play it. But I can't get any of them to screw up on me. It's wanting to stop now. This one's wanting to slow down and stop on me. This one's worse. It's wanting to stop on me. Hey there, Davy Tribe member. But it will play. It will play. Hey there, Davy Tribe member. How are you? But a dehumidifier, okay, a dehumidifier is what this machine is. You can use this big dehumidifier. It has a compressor like an air conditioner. And what it does, it keeps the humidity below 50%. That's what you got to do. You have, I have a humidity meter. And to keep the tape, the humidity below 50% in this room, for these tapes, all 960 of them of these tapes that I've got, almost a thousand. Anybody wants to send me any cassettes, you can do it. I'll be glad to have them, no matter how bad off they are. Okay. I've got a quiet rack cassette. Here. Now, it has that problem. And you see this, I'm going to show you. This Pasha Records. That's what it says on the tape. It says Pasha. Pasha Records. But it's produced, it's distributed... If you can see it through CBS. It's distributed through CBS. And it has that classic style. See? Like that. That's your CBS records. And it's Pasha, but it's through CBS. And, um... Anything affiliated with CBS records. They have a problem. It's either lack of lubrication or binder hydrolysis. I'm thinking it could just be lack of lubrication. So you can put silicone on the tape ribbon. Dry out the tape in a food dehydrator and put silicone on a Q-tip and run silicone over the ribbon. And it'll have a chance to dry. Well, you have a great collection. Oh, thank you, David Tribe member. Hey there, Tasha Teeling. We're going through cassette tapes. For These cassettes here. Yeah. Okay. And I've got my... You see, you just take your... Your springy... The springy thing is mashed back in there. You can take your finger with the cassette. The springy thing, you take it with your finger and mash the springy thing in. And push it all the way back in there. And it will stay in there. The, if you have a tape that goes... Whir, 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 whir. And it starts doing that. It starts to roar, roar, roar. And it don't want to go through the player. It has to. It, it can't handle the friction. It can't handle the friction. Of the head. Squeezing the tape. In between the springy thing. And the head. The tape has to pull through and squeeze it. The tape is sticky or lack of lubrication. You have to mash in your springy thing. And it will play. That's why all these cassettes play. That I've got. You just have to take special circumstances to play them. If the tapes are like that, you, you can play them, but you take special precautions to get them to play, okay? That's what it takes to play a tape with special problems to it. Okay. Later on in another video, I'll go over my tapes, but... Okay, we've got some rock. Each section has its own... Now, we call vaporwave. 
Now, vaporwave is a popular thing, but I've made my homemade vaporwave tapes. See? I've made my own homemade vaporwave tapes and stuff. There's something called Macintosh Plus Floral Shop. Some of this music online, it's, uh, I made my homemade versions of it, you know. This, this vaporwave and uh, electronic music is good stuff, so. Sega Saturn. Macintosh Plus Floral Shop is a famous vaporwave album. I think that's it. I don't know for sure if that's it. And we got St. Pepsi. These are just homemade for my own use. Okay. Echo Sounds. This is Echo Sounds, okay. Echo Jams or whatever. They're homemade. Yeah, Chuck Pearson's Echo Jams, Volume One. And if you like vaporwave, yeah. So that's just my little education on cassettes. Quite a little bit of what I know, and I got to play my grandmother's tapes that she recorded, and they'll stay magnetized for a very long time. Oh, thank you, Davy Tribe member. Yeah. This is God information of giving. Yay. Okay. Just thought I would show everyone and let everybody know a little of what I know that tapes, you know, they get a bad rap. They get a bad reputation. That they don't last. They don't hold up. But, I mean, these tapes, I mean, I've got tapes in the 60s. I've got tapes from the 1960s. They still play, you know. Now, I'll, t I'll show you something. This is one of the very first cassettes in the world. The cassette tape was introduced in 1963. The cassette tape was introduced in 1963 under the Phillips name. But in America, they used the name Go in America in the 60s. Hello, RV Davy. How are you? This tape is from the 1960s. This tape is around. This tape it came with the tape player I have, the very the original cassette player. I'll show it to you. The very first cassette player in the world, the first model, the very first model of cassette player in the history of the world, in um in uh, the UK and in Europe, it was called the Philips EL thirty three hundred. I know I forgot what it was called. Oh, schmoozle. Schmoozle, schmoozle, schmoozle. This is the cassette player in the world. Davey, I don't know if you remember. It's known as the Nero 150. There's a nice 1960s ad for the cassette player. Norelco cordless tape recorder. And I got this thing working. Cartridge tape. Look at this. Yeah, look. See, it calls it a cartridge. See? It's weird they call it a cartridge. Now, this is it. The original. You see, this tape player was made in 1965. Because that's what it says inside the machine. I put new belts on this machine. It's 1965. It was the year that machine was made. That particular machine. Okay, this is the Caracorder 150. All these tapes that came in this box are original from 1965. And there is your demonstration cassette. Now, the demonstration cassette is not in here. But I am going to go out and find a replica or make a replica of the demonstration cassette. Okay, there's your microphone carry case. Here's how it opens to play your tape. You just push this button up like that. Play your tape how it works um okay 
you um, rewind and fast forward. It goes like that. Like that. That's how you use it. Okay, we're going to demonstrate the cassette tape that is, see, 55 years old. This cassette tape is over 55 years old. That's how old this tape is. And it's not just a player that sold. This tape was original to this machine. Okay. Okay. The very, 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 very first cassettes had this to them. They would say, Norelco made in Holland. It has flat screws. Before they came out with the Phillips head screw, this has flat screws in it. So you have your flat head screw in your 1965 cassette tape. If you had a brand new 1965 GTO and you had a cassette player in your 1965 GTO, go out and buy you a brand new cassette player, record music off the radio, play it in your brand new 1965 GTO, and listen to it. Yeah. If you probably didn't have a car cassette player in 1965, they probably didn't have a car player back then with the original cassette, which is what this is. Now, we're going to play our vintage original cassette tape. Oh, cool. Yay. Yeah, listen to this. Yeah, they did. They have that in cars. They track. So you got to tell everybody you got to hear a 55-year-old cassette tape. Older than most of you people in here. This tape is older than most of you. Hey there, East Coast. How are you? So you got to hear the oldest, probably one of the oldest working cassette tapes anywhere in the world. Demonstrated on YouTube. One of the very first cassette tapes in the world demonstrated for you here on YouTube. Okay. 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 Okay.